Uh, let's go to cash flow forecast. And before we do that, let me run another polling question. Now, for cash flow forecast, we're going to do two. We're going to talk about one called fast cash flow forecast, and we're going to talk about cash flow projector. They're two completely entire different functions. So we're going to work these two, cash flow forecast and cash flow projector. Um, so let's start with cash flow forecast. So the point of the cash flow forecast is to grab the current register balance, account for forecasted inflows, which are based on open invoices that are assumed that they're going to be paid on the due date. Then it's going to forecast the outflows, which is going to be based on bills. You have to have bills in there to be paid on the due date. If there are no bills or no invoices, you cannot use the cash flow forecasting tool to project anything. Okay. The, the other tool uh, that we'll talk about, which is cash flow projector, that you can manually add things in. So we'll discuss that after. But specifically on the cash flow forecast, it's a hundred percent based on the data that is already in QuickBooks. Okay. All right. So let's jump into the product now. And let's go into reports. Company and financial cash flow forecast. It's all the way in the bottom of um, the company and financial section. There's a shortcut to get to that report, which is Alt RFH. So if I hit Alt RFH, it will get me to that report. Now you don't have to use the shortcut, but whatever. Okay, so really important. Uh, purchase orders will not be projected in here. Estimates and sales orders will also not be projected here. This is only, only, only based on outstanding invoices and outstanding bills. So let's start with projecting it starting today. And this is the, the today's date on the sample file. And let's go all the way through a month. So what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, the balance from today. Let's start with tomorrow. Let's do tomorrow all the way to January 15th. So I'm going to forecast a month works of cash flow. Now that's a very common thing. So what are all the components here? So let's break them all down. These are extremely, extremely important. So the projected balance on the right side, the 394.023, it's how much cash should be in the bank right now, assuming that if there's any invoices due today, uh, they're going to be paid today. So notice that there is now a breakdown of every week for the next month. Now, that month is based on the date range that we used here in the top part, but these, these uh, breakdowns are based on the periods. So if I want to project cash flow in a, let's say, for example, in a two-week breakdown, it's going to break it down uh, every two weeks. If I want to do it in a month breakdown, it will break them down for every calendar month. If I want to do it every half month, it will do it for every uh, 15 days. So I basically get to pick, you know, whether I want daily or a weekly cash flow projection. The most common is week. That's why week is the default. Now, what are these numbers? We're going to have on the accounts receivable column, these are all the invoices that are due on the dates that fall in that specific week. So for example, you look at the week of December 16th to December 22nd, you got 36,000 in there. If I double click on the 36,000, it will show me a report of all the invoices that are due in that period. Let me go ahead and double click on the invoice so we can see it, right? There's the invoice date and there's my due date, the 22nd. If I change that due date, for example, if I change it, let's say to the 28th, you're going to see, and before I hit save and close, just make sure that we know where this lands. So this is currently landing on that first week. But if I change the invoice and I change the due date, now you're going to see that 36,000 shift from week one to week two. So let me go ahead and hit save and close. And yes, and there it is. You saw that shift from week one to week two. So that's 100% based on the due date of the invoice. Now, the common question I have is, look, my customers don't really pay 
you know, on the day of the invoice, they usually end up paying kind of late. They pay two days late, three days late, four days late. So if that's the case, we can click up here where it says delay receipts. And we can assume in here, this is where we make the assumption that people pay about, let's say about 10 days late. So I'm going to put there 10 and then hit refresh. And then you're going to see how all these cash flows push up to 10 days after the um, their due date. So that's really, really important little option that you have there. Now, there are ways for you to check the historical performance of your receivables. So then you can infer or calculate based on that what that delay receipts should be. So to do that, we're going to go to reports. We're going to go to customers and receivables. And then we're going to click on average days to pay summary. So when I go in my average days to pay summary, I'm going to get here a breakdown of all my customers and what their average days that they take to pay. Now, this is only based on paid invoices. This is not based on open invoices. This is simply a payment to invoice performance report. So if you look at you know, how, how many days they take to pay, from that number, you can deduct it from your average terms and then figure out whether or not you should add a delay receipts up here or maybe don't add any delay receipts because most of these people pay within 10 days and we have 30 day terms so everybody here really pays on time. Now, another uh, quick little tidbit here, a lot of people don't know this, but if you double click on this total dollar amount here, or which would be the same thing as going into reports, customers and receivables, and average days to pay, not the summary, we get a column here called date paid. This is the only report in the entire world of QuickBooks in which that column does anything. And what date pay does is it actually shows me uh, the invoice original date, which in this case is 5-15-17. And then if the invoice was paid, it actually tells me the pay date. This is the only report in all of QuickBooks that, that does this. Okay, so kind of a, an interesting thing to know that you can actually see invoices with a pay date uh, next to it. So let me go ahead and click close and click close. So that's just a little tidbit on how we can do that. Now, one of the common questions I have is, hey, um, you know, what about my payroll? What about my rent? What about, you know, my office supplies? What about all these things that I don't create bills for? This tool is not going to correctly uh, project my cash flow. Well, the answer is yes, you're right. If there's no bill in QuickBooks, it won't do it. If there's no invoice, it won't do it. So if you wanted to create a fake bill for whatever reason, if you wanted to create a fake bill, so I'm gonna go into vendors, um, enter bills. I'm gonna create a vendor called monthly cash flow projection. And I'm gonna create a fake bill for my average Overhead, let's just say 25,000. And I'll put it here into office supplies. It doesn't really matter. And then I put here note used for cash flow projections only. That way we don't accidentally print the check to this vendor that doesn't exist. So if I create a bill and let's put it here the end of the month and make this do the end of the month. So I can, if I create basically a stand-in bill a fake bill and I click on save and I come in here, then now I can project my overhead. So if you wanted to project a payroll, office expenses, whatever, you would have to create a bill for this. And then once the month is over or once most of those expenses are paid, simply all you have to do is change the date, move it to the next month. That way, if I'm doing a cash flow projection that's maybe more than uh, than that month, then it will show up on when it's supposed to show up. So that's just a quick little tip on how you can insert some of that information uh, in there. Okay, so that's what the cash flow project the project the cash flow forecast is, not the projection. That's what the cash flow forecast is. Now let me um, um, let me answer some questions here. So one of the questions I have is, what about future dated checks? Will those be included? The answer is yes. Anything that affects your bank, uh, like a deposit in the future or a check in the future, 
Those are going to be displayed here under that third column that says uh, bank accounts. So right there where you see uh, bank accounts, that third column, that's going to show you any future checks. So if you do, in fact, create a future check, that's going to show up in here. As a matter of fact, if I double click on this 4200 that you see there, I see all the checks data for the future there. So, so okay. So that is uh, cash flow forecast, which is 100% based on real QuickBooks information, not based on any other data that I'm thinking about or, or memorized transactions or historical, nothing. This is only based on invoices and bills that are actually created in QuickBooks. I'm going to show you another tool, often forgotten tool, called the cash flow projection tool. Now, the cash flow projector tool, only included in QuickBooks um, Premier, is similar to the cash flow forecast. However, with this tool, we can actually manually insert information in there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on cash flow projector. And again, whether you use um, whether you use um, uh, fake bills or not, like I did on that example, cash flow projector will help you. That way, you don't actually have to create any standing bills. So let me just kind of walk you through the cash flow projector. So <clears throat> this is a this doesn't seem like a natural QuickBooks tool because it actually goes through. Um, you know, a questionnaire. So let's go through it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on next. And the first question it tells me is, which bank account would you like to project funds for? So I can select all the bank accounts, my checking, my saving that I want. Do would you like to make an adjustment into your initial balance? Let's say, for example, I have an outstanding check for 100,000 that I that I haven't put into QuickBooks yet. So can I make uh, an adjusted balance? Yeah, I can do that. So I can adjust it by a hundred thousand if I want to. Again, if that if that was already in QuickBooks, I would I don't have to do it. But if I want to make a quick adjustment, I can do that. So that's going to give me my new beginning balance, and that's extremely important because that is your baseline. Then I'm going to click on next, and then it gives me a couple of choices. It says, "How would you like to project your income?" This is your income. So we can do a couple of things. One is I can I can click on our projected manually. And then I can just sit there and say, well, you know, on whatever day, let's say December 25th, 2018, I'm going to get uh, most of my invoices, whatever you can type it, whatever you want. And I say, I'm going to get 50,000, right? And then I can, again, I can, I can manually put dollar amounts in here and I can manually project my income on the date. And you're going to start seeing how your cash receipt summary starts getting constructed. I can also choose my average. So I can say, use my last six weeks of collection and I hit yes here. And then QuickBooks will literally uh, grab whatever I collected the last six weeks and push them over and project them over the next six weeks. Or I can say, use the average of the last six weeks and then that's going to average out the entire collections on the past six weeks in a weekly basis. Or I can have different things. So I can do project the same as last year. So that will take last year's information and push it in here. I can do weighted average. There's a couple of really interesting uh, options there. And then even with that, I can manually make adjustments and say, well, I'm actually going to get 5,000 more here. And then I'm going to get, let's say, 2,000 less here. So there's a couple of really interesting tools here to project my income. Now, when I click on next, now it's time to project my expenses. So I can actually uh, manually, for this particular one, I can manually project my payroll, my taxes, my, now these I typed in myself. So I basically select any line item from my chart of accounts. And I can say, I can select the date. Okay, I can select the date here that I want. I can select whether or not this is going to be a weekly thing. So I can put here weekly and then I can put $50. So tons of flexibility there. And then you're going to see on the bottom where they get start getting summarized. So I'm going to hit next. Then the last question says, I'm actually going to grab what's on my accounts payable and put it all in this cash flow projection based on the due date, right? So based on the due date is also going to assume 
It's going to assume both what we manually entered here. These are for the things that we don't have bills for. And then the things that we assume we're going to pay because they happen to be in my, in my accounts payable, right? And then I can click on finish projection. And then basically what you get is you get a weekly report of all the balances that should, your bank should have after your income projection and your adjustments and then all the cash outflows. And this allows you to pretty much know whether or not you're gonna have enough cash to make payroll, to pay rent for whatever. And then at that point, you can save it as a PDF or print it and, uh, and hit close and you're pretty much out of it. So I'm gonna click close. So that's the cash flow projection tool. A lot of people don't use it. It's actually really, really nice. Um, it's, it's really not until you get shown detail by detail that you realize that that is uh, there. 